Welcome back to iTunes. So, till now we have covered quite a bit on issue, but uh, there, there is a whole lot to cover, right? All right. Um, so, I believe uh, that you might have got uh, some hands on uh, on creating the account in Azure, and you might have already set up some uh, set up your free account, right? Okay. So that would be required for your practice, right? All right, uh, so before uh, we uh, move on further, let me go ahead and cover some of the basics of Azure, okay? Or some of the basics uh, how Azure will be utilized in cloud technologies. Okay, so this session, I'm actually going to cover some of the basics so that you can actually understand more about cloud computing and why are we actually required to go to the cloud computing world. So those are the things that we are going to cover in this session and also we are going to cover a bit on the capex and opex model, um, why we should be going on the capex. So all those things we are going to cover about. Okay, great. I'll see you in the, in the session. Thank you. Welcome back to iTunes. So I hope you have created your free accounts right on the portal uh, portal.azure.com, right? Uh, great. Uh, so if you have, uh, then as soon as you create the account, you will uh, get the this sort of page, isn't it? And then I would actually want you to touch base on uh, the things that you're going to get with this free account. Okay. So with this, you're going to get 12 months of popular free services. Okay, and uh, there are some uh, some services which are always free. Okay, like uh, the Linux or the Windows uh, images that you can use free of cost for the entire uh, duration of this account. We are going to touch base in detail on all those things in uh, in uh, in the future sessions. But for now, you just have a note of uh, like what are the things that you're going to get uh, free of cost. Okay, first thing is you're getting 12 months of popular free services. Second one is you're getting 25 plus services that is going to be absolutely free or always free. Okay. And then you're getting a $200 worth of credit that is for the duration of 30 days. Okay. So it's $200 uh, if the account is in US, but if your account is in uh, any other country, then it will be the equivalent of $200. Okay. Great. So now let's uh, touch base on cloud computing right so what is cloud computing cloud computing means you utilize the computing resources such as cpu ram storage network um, and other things and only pay for what you are using right you don't pay for the entire thing right you you you, you have this pay as you go model right now let's take an example okay so you have you have your own infrastructure in place wherein you have your two racks of uh, servers right and that is good enough for you for your current um, requirement now for example if you are um, your i mean this is for your e-commerce site let's take an example of an e-commerce site okay now the like uh, uh, i mean uh, for example if you if you want to now that you want to um, uh, announce some sort of uh, uh, shopping uh, event, right? Uh, then what you do is you actually come up with some sort of uh, summer shopping sale or something like that, right? And then what happens is with this campaign, you actually go ahead and add up an another rack of the server. Okay, that's how you're going to add up another rack. Yeah. So, considering that you're going to expect uh, some traffic and uh, your existing servers will not be able to uh, match up with the requirements, so add up another rack, isn't it? 
Now what happens when you uh, when the campaign is actually going in a full swing and there is high demand okay you seeing that users are not able to um, I mean sorry uh, the server resources are not able to cope up with the requirement of the servers and there the users are feeling that the site has gone slow they're not getting uh, the proper response uh, from the portal uh, there is there is efficiency issue right and that could actually turn your customers um, uh, into positive to a negative one right so to avoid this what you do is you add another rack isn't it so with with the based on the demand you have added another rack now when you started off you had only two racks and then at the start of the campaign you added one more rack but looking at the demand you have added the fourth rack right so now what happens the campaign is over right now uh, you ended up uh, you have ended up with having four racks of servers right now your initial setup was only with two racks correct when when we started off uh, initially it was with two racks okay and you you were able to suffice with that right your load was not that much and you were able to suffice with the two racks but because of the campaign what you have ended up is you have ended up with two more racks. Now consider the effort that would be required. Okay, um, we, we started off with two uh, racks. Now with four racks, the effort will be double, isn't it? The power, um, the um, cooling uh, requirements, the manpower, um, the all those cycles of patching, maintenance window, and all, all those things, right? there will be additional cost for that right so is this a viable solution that you should be having when you're uh, running a uh, sort of a campaign only for uh, for uh, about a uh, 15 days but ending up with a uh, with maintaining the hardware and software for the entire um, 350 days more isn't it i mean so is it is it a viable solution or is it cost effective to have this sort of scenario well, I don't think so. So that that is a good uh, that is a good uh, use case that why we should actually move to cloud. Okay. So if you were in cloud, right, consider that you have um, two servers, right, and you're fine with it. Okay. And both these two uh, racks are on cloud. Okay. So you you you're fine with it. Now, when you start with a campaign, you actually get provision with one more service on the go right so this is this is the i mean um, the beauty of this uh, uh, cloud uh, that you can actually get your service provision on the go right so you got it provision on the go right now you see that okay there is a high demand you get one more uh, service provision on it so you, what i'm trying to say out here is you can grow you're growing your um, uh, server requirement right For, so that is on demand right and that is that is actually um, the example of uh, scalability and adaptability so with this we we are able to cope up with the high demand if if there is further more demand we can add some more servers to to the existing design and can go on and on right this there's no problem uh, with uh, getting additional servers right so what happens once the campaign is over okay i go back i i deprovision those additional servers and i go back with the original model okay so now your current setup will have only these two servers which are uh, which you would require and that is what we started off with before the campaign right so as you can see now i don't have to worry about the servers uh, it was all on rent uh, provision only for a certain period of time and as soon as that requirement was over I got it uh, deprovision right so I, I'll be paying only for th that amount of time for which I have utilized those resources and get rid of uh, as soon as my work is done right so what we have seen out here is so this is a perfect pay as you go model right and that is the advantage of uh, your of the cloud infrastructure right 
So there are there are few cloud deployment uh, models uh, which I want to uh, discuss on. Um, first one is the public cloud. Okay. So what is a public cloud? Uh, and one of the example of the public cloud is uh, Microsoft Azure. There are other also like uh, Google's uh, Google Cloud and uh, Amazon's AWS or Amazon Web Service and IBM software. Okay. So the advantage of public cloud pay as you go model right it's a pay as you go model you don't need to worry about uptime patching and putting the server on maintenance okay this will be automatically done in the back end the, the solution will be highly scalable flexible and adaptable right because as, as we have seen in the earlier example how we were able to scale up and scale down and um, I mean um, um, both uh, horizontally and vertically this is something which we have to look at in the coming sessions and it is flexible and adaptable to the requirement servers can be provisioned and deprovisioned within minutes right so it's like it would take about um, a few minutes to get the entire server up and running right so that is that is the advantage of public cloud okay now let's look at what is private cloud so Private cloud can also be referred to as a traditional or on-prem data center. Right? So it, it actually ha becomes an in-house responsibility for uptime patch patching, maintenance and upgrade of the hardware and as well as software. Okay? This, there will be additional cost on in-house to manage the infrastructure. So, the, these are the things that we actually ended up um, when we are managing private cloud, right? So now there is a mixture of public and private cloud that is called as hybrid cloud. Okay, so let's talk about hybrid cloud. So it is it is a mixture of uh, public and uh, private cloud. Okay, so you can see we have on-prem uh, cloud infrastructure, and um, there you can have uh, uh, some servers in cloud. So it is a combination of public and private cloud. Private cloud is used to meet compliance, security and strict regulation. Private cloud can also be used for testing before deploying the application on uh, public cloud and vice versa. So you can use um, the testing um, of the application for a testing bad uh, both for um, I mean you can test out on-prem and then if it is working fine then you can deploy in production on cloud and vice versa depending on the requirement so um, it becomes in-house responsibility for maintaining on-prem hardware and software whereas uh, for uh, cloud uh, it becomes cloud service providers responsibility for maintaining hardware and software on cloud right okay so I think we have um, I mean we are clear now uh, for what is the difference between public private and hybrid cloud right okay great so let's move to the next one now let's talk about what is capex and what is opex right so why we are talking about this because when we are talking about moving from an on-prem to uh, uh, cloud uh, infrastructure we actually need to be sure or we need to be uh, sure on what we are going to achieve in terms of financial things right so what is capex uh, so capex is the upfront cost to support infra that means when you're going to support the infra when you're going to um, buy the hardware software um, those will be though all those tangible objects will be your uptime cost right upfront cost and also the the those items uh, those resources which you have bought those will have a reduction of value over a period of time right because um, every every i mean those those resources will have a, some sort of a depreciation which uh, which can be i mean which will be a reduction in the value of uh, those items right but in other ways uh, what is opex so opex is there is no upfront cops uh, up, upfront cost it is actually a pay as you go model so you uh, pay for whatever you're using and don't pay for the entire thing okay so infra is always up to date you don't have to worry about um, or you don't have to spend uh, time and uh, money on maintaining the resources um, 
opposite, right? So that is the difference between, uh, or that is the comparison between capex and opex. So capex is the model which, uh, when you are using for on-prem servers, then actually it actually is a capex model. So uh, what is capex? So cap it is a capital uh, expenditure, right? That is the full form of capex, uh, and opex stands for operations expense or expenses, yeah. So with OPEX, you uh, OPEX will come into picture when you move all the resources on cloud. All right, uh, guys. Uh, so I think we have covered quite a bit uh, for for the Azure Cloud Basics uh, terminology, and uh, we will cover some few sessions uh, to have a, a sort of a basic understanding on Azure before we move on to the real thing on Azure, right? Because we want to make sure that we are capturing or we are making uh, our um, basics or our concepts clear before we move on to the bigger picture. All right, great. Um, that's all guys for now. I'm not uh, having anything more to discuss out here. So stay connected by clicking on the subscribe icon and uh, uh, click on the bell icon to get notified. Okay, until next time, um, keep watching and keep learning. Thank you.